David Morgan with the 10 rules for silver investing. Rule number one, when all else fails, there is silver. No one likes to be a prophet of doom, but the simple truth is that silver is the world's money of last resort. Should a severe economic collapse occur, leaving paper assets worthless, silver will be the primary currency for the purchase of goods and services. Gold will be a store of major wealth, but will be priced too high for day-to-day -day use. Thus, every investor should own some physical silver and store a portion of it where it's accessible in an emergency. Rule 2. Start small. Keep it simple. Too many investors, upon deciding to beef up their metals portion of their portfolio, buy too much physical silver at once and in the wrong forms. Beginning metals investors should concentrate on pure bullion bars or coins in smaller sizes, looking to pay a minimum premium over the actual melt value. Avoid commemorative coins, decorative items, jewelry, and other collectibles, all of which carry a large premium and have limited resale markets. That's the rule. I'd like to add on to that briefly. I'm recording this in August of 2011. Right now, and it has been true for quite some time, and is also generally true, that junk bags, which are 1964 U.S. minted coins or older, are 90% silver, and they usually carry the lowest premium. I think that that's a good way to start buying metal, but obviously they're rather cumbersome, but it is a good way to start. And it's also uh, one of the better barter items if it ever came to that. Not necessarily that it would, but it could. So something to bear in mind if you're looking for the best value, uh, check out a junk bag or half bag or quarter bag or even uh, rolls of quarters, dimes, 1964 or previous. Rule three, boost the buying power of your dollars with mining shares. If you are a typical investor, you can and expect to be an expert on silver and the silver market but you can invest in the people who are. Once you have established a core position in physical silver, leverage both your knowledge and your buying power by purchasing the stocks of mining companies. These shares are highly responsive to changes in the silver price, frequently producing much higher percentage returns than the metal itself. Again, I want to add on to this rule. This is true. However, in the last few years, the mining companies have not really kept pace with the bullion itself. If you go back from the inception of the bull market, many of these companies have produced spectacular gains, um, some as much as you know, 10 times the investment, 20 times investment, 30 times the investment. One particular one that comes to mind is Western Copper, which became Western Silver, which was bought by Glamis and eventually bought by Gold Corp. Uh, that mine is now in production. And that, I think, was about a 30 bagger. But the point I'm making is that uh, recently the stocks have not performed. I think this spells opportunity. Certainly, uh, a lot of our work focuses on the mining shares, but that's not the total thing we focus on. We look at money, metals, and mining. And certainly, you don't uh, need to subscribe to the Morgan Report. You can certainly look at other avenues to do your own research or determine that all you want to focus on is the metal itself and not involve yourself in the mining shares whatsoever. I just want to go on record as saying I still believe that there are great gains in the mining shares ahead of us, but you've got to be careful, you've got to be selective, and you've got to do it in a manner that takes risk and reward into account. Rule four, dollar cost average to lower your cost and increase your discipline. Dollar cost averaging is an ideal way to implement Rule 2. By making same dollar purchases at regular time intervals, you wind up buying more metal when prices are low and less when prices are high. This approach helps you develop discipline, erasing the trader mentality that infects many market participants and instead focuses an investment philosophy. Dollar cost averaging also eases the sting when prices move against you, allowing you to view the downturn as an improved buying opportunity rather than a disappointing loss. I really like this approach. Uh, this is one of the main approaches I teach for the buy and hold members of the Morgan Report. It's a great way to come out in the long run very 
very well, especially if you diversify properly, you mix the correct blend of mid-tier growth companies with speculations, and you, again, spread out. Uh, this is a very tried and true and proven methodology. I like it a great deal. You buy more silver or gold when the price is low, you buy less when the price is up, it, it still is discipline, and in the long term, you will come out in a very good manner as long as we're still in the bull market, and I believe strongly that we still are.